While many derided Double Fine's brutal legend for attempting to inject real-time strategy elements into its third-person action game, Pocket Watch Games decided that game didn't go far enough. With their newest title, Tooth and Tail, the Monaco developer have attempted to distill the RTS mechanics into a form that can be played with a controller. To that end, players control a single character who, while not participating in battles directly, can give orders and build structures. While players can move groups of units individually, it's a bit clunky and is almost always neglected in favor of simply moving your hordes around in mass. It may seem that this removes a lot of the tactical depth of the genre, but the game is much more concerned with things like army composition, positioning, and economy. Since there is no teching or unlocking of units, army composition is a matter of when to spend resources on what in order to best combat the current enemy army. Positioning is key, with players moving their commander around the battlefield to scout enemy positions, probe their base for weak points to attack or intel on their economic and army composition, and uncover locations for future expansions. Managing the economy is also a big deal. Maps are littered with grist mills, structures around which can be built resource-generating farms, but knowing when to spend those resources on more farms, unit-producing warrens, or expanding to new grist mills is where a lot of the game's depth lies. It's also important to note that farms do not last forever, and warrens automatically produce units when there are enough resources to spend and vacancies in population. What this means is that players need to go into battle with sufficient resources to recoup losses while also banking enough for future expansions since farms and grist mills are not sustainable. The problem is that the game does a poor job of communicating incoming resources, when farms will be depleted, outgoing resources for unit production, and even what order those units will be produced in. This poor communication is a bit of a theme with Tooth and Tail. The map does a poor job of communicating points of interest. The art style does a poor job of communicating passable terrain. The unit descriptions do a poor job of communicating what those units actually do. So on and so forth. The campaign is there, ostensibly, to teach players the mechanics, but it suffers from the same lack of communication the rest of the game does. The missions are varied, featuring all of the game's factions and units wrapped in a compelling story revolving around four factions of animals vying for control of their nation. It's a loose analog for the Russian Revolution that manages to make all of its factions sympathetic and deliver on themes of class struggle and perspective. Unfortunately, it suffers from an appalling random map generation system, which can create drastic swings in mission difficulty based on what map seed you get. The fluctuation of the map every time you restart a mission makes any sort of planning nearly impossible as the strategies that may have worked on the map you just played may not on the new one. What often results is restarting a mission until you get a favorable map seed. Multiplayer is a breath of fresh air by comparison. It benefits from a consistency of objective and a more symmetrical map generation. Match times are generally quick, which lends itself to experimentation with different units, build orders, and strategies. As long as there is a community there to support it, multiplayer is easily the most compelling part of the package. Tooth and Tail has a lot going for it. It has a unique design, a nice, albeit occasionally obtrusive aesthetic, a complex world with weighty themes, and a fresh and enjoyable multiplayer component. The problem is that the campaign, the half of the game which should probably prepare players for that enjoyable multiplayer, is a gauntlet of poorly illustrated mechanics and frustrating design decisions. Those looking for a complete package, something more than a decent multiplayer experience, should turn tail and look elsewhere.